everyone, it's Monique from Better Be Scraps and I'm back for another week of our mini album tutorial series. Honestly, I think it's going to be this week and next week and we're going to be done. Yay! So this week we're going to focus on pages 10 and 11, which are way near the back of this mini album. So we did this spread here last week. This week... We are doing this spread and of course we got the couple of flaps and I did some preparation work. Um, you can see I, I actually attached the background paper to the page here and added a few brads. Like with the other spreads that have opened up, I've done um, picture mats with the brads here. Also added a few brads here and the chain with a charm. So this is all pretty much identical to the other two spreads that have been like that. Over here, um, I did he adhere this wallpaper down after putting some brads in. This I did not glue down yet, although the spread is finished. It's ready. Um, and, but there is, there is meaning to the madness. Um, so basically we've got the three pages. We've got this page, this page, and this page over here that we are going to be working on today. Um, so let's start with this one. This is going to be pretty basic. What I've decided to do is um, I'm just going to add a couple of corner embellishments and then create a picture mat for in the middle. I have not cut the picture mat yet because I haven't glued anything down and I just want to make sure to get the, the dimensions correct. So I've got my little box of goodies here. Basically what I've decided to do here is layer some metals over in this corner. I can remember how I had it set up. Kind of like so. And then over here, oops, I guess it helps if that filigree is in the right way. We're going to do something like that. So when I glue these down, I'm going to be careful to glue along this edge and the bottom half of this gear so I can tuck a tag in behind there. Same with here, I'm going to be very careful to only glue along the edges of this corner so I can tuck my picture mat in there. Um, this little guy, I'll make sure he's glued right to the filigree. So let me go do that and I will show you what it looks like when I get back. Okay, so I am back and I finished gluing everything down. This is what it looks like close up. And I ended up cutting this mat, or this, this whole tag, it's four inches by six and a quarter inches. So the mats for it are three and three quarters by six inches. And I just measured that placed on, based on the placement of my metal pieces here. And I'm not going to put that in quite yet because I want the glue to dry a little bit. I'm also going to set this aside while we work on the inside here because one, I want the glue to dry and two, um, I don't want to have to deal with the extra weight when I'm flipping this open. So this of course is on the inner page and we're going to set that aside and it will be very clear to you very shortly why I didn't glue that on yet. Um, so we're going to work on this page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a waterfall on here. Um, ginger my design team member, my also known as my sister scrapper, had mentioned that she's got some people asking to do a waterfall tutorial. So I thought I'd do it for you guys here. Um, just let me grab my stuff. So I've got everything. These are all my mats, they're all cut, inked. They all have tape on the back, so we are prepared. Um, so basically you need three pieces to create the waterfall. At least this is how I do it. Now your dimensions will vary based on the page size. I went with a four inch by 11 inch strip of paper 
and then I scored it at four inches from the end. So this bottom piece is seven inches. And let me show you just, here, I'll just use this guy. Just for reference, so you can see how big it is with regards to the page. So it's not quite as big as the matting on that page. Okay, so we're gonna start with that. And then you need two more pieces. These are cut to four inches by four and a half inches and scored at half an inch. You can see I used my corner rounder to round all the corners. So basically what we're gonna do is glue these on evenly spaced out like that. It's that easy, you guys. Um, the spacing I'm gonna use is one inch and for the flaps, I'm actually gonna glue them. So what I'm gonna do is take out my handy dandy Tim Holtz ruler. Let me see. Okay. Yeah, see it's easier for me to line up to this metal edge because this other side has a bit of a slope to it or an angle to it. It's so I know the edge of my paper will just slide up onto the ruler. That is not what I want. So I'm going to take this score line and I am going to line it up with this one inch line. I'm going to add glue to this flap, hold down the ruler, glue it right about there. You might have to slightly shimmy it from side to side just to make sure the edges hold up. And just because it is convenient, I am going to use, ooh, I better not use that. I'll use my fabric tack. I'm worried it might come pouring out. Yep. Well, if you're anything like me, there are no shortage of glues on your table. So I've got this Aileen's Fabric Fusion, good enough. You can use score tape here if you like. I just think glue provides a stronger bond. Score line is lined up on that one inch line. And now, let me make this look difficult for you guys. There we go, it's that easy. I said that already, didn't I? And look at me moving it. Like I said, you wanna make sure these edges are lined up or it's just gonna look poorly done. And I know we got glue leaking out. Don't worry, that will be covered up. Except for maybe an eighth of an inch on the ends. Okay, so the next one, again, line this one inch line up with the score line of this flap that you just glued down. slip there. Oh, sorry guys, probably got my hair in the shot there. So now you should have this and your flap should all look relatively even. Okay, so when you mat this, because I don't like to leave it without magnets be for this reason, exactly. I want it to lay nice and flat, so I like to use magnets to hold that down. So 
speaking of which. Excuse me for a moment while I get my magnets. And I am back with the magic of video. You didn't even notice I was gone, did you? So I got my magnets here. And I can't remember if I've said or if I was going to say it's easiest if you start matting from the top down to the bottom layers. That's because if you're matting the bottom, you just got to estimate where your magnet needs to be. This way, no estimating. I'll show you what I mean. So, you don't need a magnet for this top guy. Excuse me while I bore you with taking the backing of the score tape off. Okay, so that one's good. We do, however, want a magnet back here to hold it to this flap here. So before we put the paper on, let's put the magnet on. As usual, I use E6000. And because I am so anal, I want it to be at least approximately centered. And I'm going to put it right about there. I always put E6000 on both sides of the magnet. I don't know why. Habit. Also gives a better bond. Now you can put this mat right over top. I do like to burnish around the magnet. Okay, I should mention these mats here for all these flaps are three and three quarters by three and three quarter inches. I did create little tiny mats to put in here. These are three and three quarter inches by three quarters of an inch and you need two of those and this back one while I'm at it is a little bit longer so it's three and three quarter inches by four and three quarter inches okay so now that you have this first one done you can easily line up the magnet with your next page so I just pull a magnet off and you've seen me do this before like that. So you just keep doing that on each flap. So there'll be a magnet here, a magnet here, and a magnet there.
Okay, I am done my waterfall here, and I decided just to speed up the film so you could see exactly where I place the magnets. This one here really bugs me because I didn't measure it and it's off center, but I will live with that decision. So I ended up using one, two, three, four, five, six magnets there, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. And so this is ready to be adhered to this page. Now, I know I just put another magnet off to the side here. So basically what I'm going to try to do is use one of these magnets, I can feel one right there, that's the one that's furthest to the right, to snap this page down. I'm just trying to use fewer magnets if possible. Here we go. Found it. So that guy's going to go on there. And when I'm in a hurry, I just do what you saw me do. It essentially stamps a little glue spot where my magnet's got to go. So now I can here adhere this page down. So I'm going to adhere this page and the one on the other side that we finished. Glue should be pretty well dry. And I will come back and finish the last page. Okay, I am back, and I don't know if you all noticed this rather big mistake I made, and I made it before I even started filming. I flipped this page over. I had intended to use the design on the back side, so now I'm really not happy. <laughs> but anyways, I mean, it's not the end of the world. Just goes to show that I make mistakes all the time. I'm not going to change it now. Uh, I guess... Technically, I could. Um, it would mean tearing all this stuff off, getting the undo out, and actually, I I, I may choose to do that. I don't know. Um, let's finish this page first, and then I'll see what I think of the spread. So, anyways, over here, I have decided to add a couple of tags, create a couple of pockets with some tags here. So what I did was I took two of these craft tags by, from Ranger, they're the number 8 size, and I scored them at an inch and a half from the end, then folded it over, and you can see I prepared a bunch of tags from Tim Holtz there. The matting here I went with 2 and 7 eighths by 1 and a quarter inches. And I went with two and seven eighths by two and three quarters. So basically what I'm going to do here, so scored my tags. I'm going to adhere this down first. And I just kind of center it up near that uh, hole reinforcer. Like that. Then what I'm going to do is put a strip of glue on the inside here to create these pockets. Lovely. I don't know what it is with me and glue. I just I 
Then you stick this guy on. Yes. You get the idea. <laughs> stick this guy on. I'm going to do that the same thing for this one. I'm going to add some twine to the holes and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to attach them to the pages because I'd like to kind of overlap them and angle them and I'll show you how to do that in such a way that you can still get the tags in and out and actually gain an extra pocket. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, I am back and my tags are ready to go here. Um, and I think I'm going to leave this page alone. It's just too much work to to do anything about it otherwise. So basically what I'm going to do is I want these tags just angled kind of like that. Um, so I'm going to start gluing down this tag and I'm going to glue it on those three sides so that I can tack a tag in behind it from the side there. So right now I'm just using this is actually gem tack. It's what I use for for my um, rhinestones, but it seems to be gripping better than the fabric fusion. So we're gonna go right there. And we're actually going to do the same for this one. Not because we're going to tuck a tag in sideways. I just want to make sure that we can tuck the tag in this pocket without this getting in the way. So again, around the same three sides. And like so. And I think I might actually put some clips on, I'm not sure. Just to hold it in place. So then we can easily slide this guy in. Got a couple of tags to go in here. And we have one to go right in there. I'm not going to push it in too far because I don't want the glue to grab it if any has leaked out. And that, my friends, is our spread for today. So just to go over it, we've got this. This is a removable picture mat. You open this up, you have a picture mat here along with a waterfall. And another cute thing that you can do as well is add a little knob or something there so it's obvious for people to pull up. I didn't, just to keep it thinner. Then you've got these guys here. Open it up. You've got this, and of course I've got a tag to stick in there. And this photo mat. And that is it for today. So I hope you guys like the tutorial. I hope you learned something. i uh, got some more ideas on what to do on pages for your mini albums. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me for so long. Um, next week I'm going to finish this page and I think we should be able to do the covers as well. So we're going to finish everything off next week. So excited. Okay, have a great week guys. Cheers!